Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be making a sumo characters tier list. That's right, I know, we're making a tier list for a made up game mode that I created. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? If you've been around the channel the past few years, then I'm sure you've come across at least one or two of my sumo videos. Some of them are very popular, and that's because in the mode, you can get hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of healing and damage. So let me explode... <laughs> Explain mode. Explode. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so let me explain how the mode works. You have four tanks and one support on both teams. There is absolutely no cauterize, and you're not allowed to target the healer for the first 20 minutes of the match unless the healer tries to contest on the point. You can crowd control the healer as much as you want, but you can't crowd control them to the point to then kill them. That would just be mean. After the 20 minute mark, you are allowed to kill the healer, and that is to break up stalemates, and oftentimes sumos do reach that 20 minute mark, and it is quite the game changer, because all of a sudden now supports are being hunted, and their survivability skills are really, really important. So yeah, it's a fun fan favorite game mode that we play every now and again on the channel, we just uploaded a video on it yesterday, and today I thought... It would be just kind of fun to make a silly tier list for these characters because the meta in sumos is completely different to the meta in the real game and i just want to see how drastic the difference actually is so the tier list is going to work just like any tier list we have s tier for the absolute best ban priority picks we have a tier for really good characters b for balanced c for characters that can be good but are pretty niche and then d tier for the characters that are wholly unviable in sumos and yeah this list is a, a bit silly, but B, it's also just my opinion. And so like with all the other tier lists, I do want to give the disclaimer that, uh, yeah, you can feel free to criticize and disagree with the tier list if you want, just keep it respectful in the comments. But anyways, let's get started. We have our list of sumo characters here. We have all the tanks, all the supports, and then we also have Sky, which might seem a little bit weird if you're coming into this after just hearing the rules being like, what the heck? <laughs> what is Sky doing here? But uh, Sky is actually the only non-support character who is competitively viable in sumos. And she's the character I just uploaded a video on yesterday, so go check that out. She is very, very good in sumos right now, actually. Anyways, let's go back to the start of the tier list with Ash, who is a pretty good character in sumos because of her knockback. Knockback is extremely valuable in sumos, especially after the resale split because well when you have a long overtime as tends to happen in sumos one powerful knockback can be all it takes to actually end up winning an objective for your team and most of the time the enemies will be prioritizing uh, unbound because there are a lot of really powerful stuns and hard cc in the tank class including ash's ultimate and that leaves less room for sentinel and if you do choose to buy both crowd control items then you're sacrificing another even more important item and well that can also have a really detrimental effect so ash is actually really good in sumos for that reason alone her aoe damage can also be good in some uh, situations for just uh, consistently applying damage to the enemy team uh destroying deployables especially in the case of going up against grok so yeah she's a pretty solid tank and I think she's a good tank to kind of start off the list in A tier. Next we have Azan, who has really good survivability and pretty decent damage. Uh, he doesn't necessarily have that much hard CC apart from his movement ability, which can be very janky. As you know, sometimes the stun just doesn't work for some reason. And uh, his ultimate is, well, it's not that good in sumos. It's a burst of damage, I guess. <laughs> but that's about it. You don't really need the mobility in sumos, but he's still dependable enough in terms of the survivability department, so I'm going to give him a B ranking. He's not bad, but he's nothing really good either. Atlas has the potential to be a very powerful character in sumos, and that is because his rewind will completely reverse all healing received for a short amount of time. And so if you're able to get someone low, but then they get healed back up, you can rewind them, and if you're good enough, you can potentially burst them once that rewind is over. However, his skills become significantly less impactful when Unbound is in the picture, and it's purchased basically by every character in every game in a sumo. So, yeah, that will significantly hamper his ability to do well. He does have decent single target damage, and his barrier can be very effective, but I do think that there are better tanks out there, and so he's going to go in B tier as well. Ah, uh, Barrack. <laughs> he's a pretty solid point tank in, you know, regular paladins, but in sumos... Well, he's kind of a good thing to have on the enemy team, and that's because he's really easy to kill. 
<laughs> he doesn't have very much HP compared to many of the other tanks, meaning there's a very low threshold of damage you need to actually end up taking him out. And uh, on top of that, he also has a very a large head hitbox, making him very vulnerable to a lot of the hit skins that are very, very powerful in Sumos. He does have a good asset in the form of his shield and his turrets, but the turrets do often get destroyed just by collateral damage, so he's really not that good in Sumos. Uh, however, he's not necessarily a throw pick either if you happen to have him on your team. Uh, I think I'll put him in C tier because he's not good enough to be a B tier tank, but I don't think he's totally worthless, so C is kind of a nice middle ground. Alright, and uh, just like in the real game, Fernando is S tier in sumos, and I don't think there's really any question about it. He has some of the best area damage in the entire tank class, which is really good, because in sumos, everyone's grouped up on the point, and so you can constantly be applying damage to everybody. He's capable of getting some of the highest damage numbers in sumos. On top of that, his shield is also very dependable, especially for putting it up right at certain moments to block a key crowd control ability or something like that, and... He has one of the best ults in the game, and that's true for Sumos too. He can pop it at clutch moments to block very powerful ultimates like Pip's ult, or just keep his team alive when they're under stress. And he can build it extremely, extremely quickly because of the aforementioned area damage. So, Fernando is an easy S tier tank for me in Sumos. Next, we have Inara. And she's basically immortal. <laughs> ba basically just immortal. The only time Inara dies is when her healer dies, and the only time that happens, legally anyways, is past the 20 minute mark. At which point, she's, uh... Still pretty hard to kill. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she doesn't really offer much outside of that. Her Warder's Field can be a decent asset, and it can be annoying if you use the Cripple Field, uh, but it can obviously be destroyed by some Bulldozer or by some Blasters, so it's not a foolproof plan. Uh, her Wall also can be a very valuable asset, but it also stops her own team from shooting, so it's kind of a mixed situation where it's good sometimes, bad sometimes. So I think that this character is probably hovering between low A and high B for me, and I think I'll leave her in high B for now, and possibly adjust her a little bit later on, depending on where I put some of the other tanks. Next we have Khan, and uh, <laughs> keeping tradition with the S tier, basically correlating between sumos and the real game, we're going to put him in S tier as well, because Khan has a very fantastic ultimate. He's able to basically pick up one tank and separate them from the flock, and if you're playing on a map that has environmental damage, you can easily get an environmental kill, and boom, that's just one tank gone. And that's super valuable in sumos, because it takes forever to kill a tank. On top of that, he's got the highest single target damage in the tank class with Storm of Bullets, and that also plays very well when you're able to headshot people like Barrick, uh, who has a very squishy head. And uh, he also has a stun, he also has a very powerful heal that is really good in sumos because there's no cauterize and everyone is grouped up, so we can consistently hit multiple people for a massive burst of 1300 healing. So Khan is excellent in sumos. Now, Makoa is in a very similar situation to Barrack. He doesn't do a lot of damage. His health pool isn't necessarily that high compared to some of the other tanks in the tank class, and he also has a very, very squishy head that makes him vulnerable to most hit scans. However, Barrack does have something that Barrack does not, and that is his hook, which is another very powerful crowd control ability because it can separate characters from the team and this means getting them away from their healer and potentially being able to dogpile them with a bunch of damage and get a kill. It's a lot harder to confirm than Khan but it is still a very valuable asset nonetheless and he does have a little bit more health than Barrack, so there's that too. Uh, but yeah, he also, unless you're playing Half Shell, his shield isn't really the most consistent either. Uh, so yeah, it's not like he has much outside of the hook going for him. And so I think I am still going to put him in C tier, but he's definitely higher up in C tier than Barrack because of that hook. But still, I can't really justify putting him any higher because he's just a little bit too squishy. Ah, Nyx! What a lovely character. Nyx is one of the highest damage dealers in the entire sumo roster, and that's because she is one of the only tanks with a powerful AoE percent based damage tool. And if you run Nyx with a build that augments her royal presence by increasing the percent based damage and possibly by the area of effect by a little bit, then you can very, very quickly build your ultimate in a sumo, and you can also consistently put damage pressure on the enemies. 
And uh, on top of that poison damage, she also, of course, has her slow, which can potentially be turned into a cripple and also does good area damage. She has her punches. So she's a very, very hefty damage dealer. And she also has very good survivability to boot. In my opinion, she's basically like a Nara, but better for the purposes of sumos. And so for that, we're definitely putting her in the A tier. The question is whether I put her above Ash or not. And uh, I think I'll probably leave her below Ash. And the reason for that is Ash's knockbacks are just, they can be very, very, very good if you time them properly. So I think that crowd control does put her a smidge above Nyx, because Ash still does have pretty good area damage and uh, pretty good survivability as well. All right, now we have Rom, and he is going to go from zero to hero. Because in my last tier list, in my real tier list anyways, I put him in the C tier. But in Sumos, he's actually S tier, and that's because Rom is basically like bringing a second support into Sumos. His subservience is the best healing skill in the tank class for Sumos, bar none. It's a global, percent-based, consistent heal. And because it's percent-based and everyone is a tank, you get huge healing numbers out of it, which is absolutely magnificent. And so, yeah, there's absolutely no reason not to pick Rom in Sumos. He also has very, very high survivability because... Honestly, he heals himself for more than his healer heals him, at some cases, and he has a really good DR, he has the highest health pool in the tank class. His crowd control is also very, very good. His ultimate can be used to clear all kinds of shields and deployables off of the field and also stun basically everybody and do a burst of damage to them. Next we get to Ruckus, and Ruckus is, in my opinion, kind of a high-risk, high-reward character for Sumos, because he can potentially be shut down very hard, but his ultimate in particular can also be a huge tool for converting an objective, because it does the most damage per second out of any damage dealing skill in the game, apart from Omen's ult, technically, but Ruckus's ult is a lot more reliable and it's the highest damage dealing ult in Sumos in particular. And so, if you time it right, then you could potentially wipe one and even two tanks, which is huge, and he also has very, very powerful damage output, and he can also have decent self-sustain if you hit multiple people with his missiles while using the Opulence card. So he's got a lot of damage, however his survivability is still, even with opulence, on the poor end. And that's because he's a tank who relies mostly on evasion to stay alive. Uh, but, you know, when you're in a sumo, you're not exactly evading damage. And he has one of the lowest health pools in the tank class. His shield is kind of laughable. So he can also potentially be really easy to kill. So, yeah, there are a lot of upsides to this guy and a lot of downsides to this guy. And that's why I think... I'm probably either going to put him in low A or high B, and I'm thinking more towards high B. Because, yeah, he's yeah he's risky, but he can also really be a huge asset for your team. And also, of course, once the 20-minute marker comes around, uh, yeah, he can be a very, very good tank for hunting down the support. As a matter of fact, I think just because of that, I'll move him to low A. Because, well, I want the tier list to be a bit more symmetric, and yeah, <laughs> I, it just, I don't know. It seems kind of weird to put him in B now that I've mentioned that. Next up, we have yet another S tier tank, and that is Terminus, which feels really weird to say, because normally he's not S tier, but in Sumos, absolutely, this guy is S tier, and that's because no matter how much he wants to die, he just doesn't. <laughs> he is ridiculously tanky thanks to the right setup with Undying and the Damage Reduction card and the Movement Speed card as well, and he also has his Power Siphon, which is one of the most valuable tools in the game for blocking damage. And this is kind of some of the uh, risk I was talking about of playing Ruckus, because sometimes if you play Ruckus against Terminus, Terminus will just shove his whole Siphon in your face and you won't be able to get any value out of the ultimate, and at that point you're probably better off picking a different tank besides Ruckus. So, yeah, the Power Siphon and there is no understating how good it is in sumos and just in general and that he also has very powerful damage in sumos because everyone is grouped up and usually in melee range on the point so he's able to just constantly be swinging and potentially be hitting multiple people at the same time while also clearing out deployables off the field so that is very very good for terminus and he his ultimate is just so good because it's a massive aoe tool yes it can be blocked easily but the main thing is it allows him to respawn. So if you do take this guy down, finally, after eons of shooting at him because he's bathing in 40% damage reduction, he'll just get right back on his feet with a full health bar. And you can potentially go an entire sumo match without dying once. 
It's crazy. Terminus is so, so good in Sumo. So another easy S-tier character. There are a lot of really powerful S-tier characters in Sumo's. Um, but Torvald is not one of them. And that might blow your mind. Because Torvald has just been... He's been the S-tier tank for, like, the longest time now in the real game. But in Sumo's, he's actually not that good. And that's because Torvald is pretty squishy. It, it, you can buy Wrecker against him in Sumo's, obviously, and Wrecker does tend to get bought sometimes if there are an overwhelming amount of shields. And when that happens, Torvald's bubble is a lot less valuable. Proportionally, his protection is not very good on tanks, and then also, his own self-bubble, yeah, can be good self-sustain, but if you're constantly taking damage and are constantly under fire from Wrecker, that leaves you with, effectively, just your regular health, to be healed up consistently, and Torvald has the same problem as Makoa and Barrick, where his H base HP is actually really small. So that can be a massive problem for Torvald, and his single target damage is pretty good, but in Sumos he lacks the ability to headshot, like Ruckus, Rom, and Khan, and so that means he can't really amplify his damage further, and uh, normally in a real game his weapon is better than Rom's, I would say, and uh, on par with, if not slightly better than Ruckus's, because it doesn't self-slow and it has no damage, uh, or really good range. I almost said no damage fallout, that's not true. <laughs> but yeah, in Sumo's you're pretty much always in point-blank range, and so, yeah, the spread on Rom and Ruckus's miniguns and the self-slow doesn't matter as much, and the fact that they can headshot actually means that they end up doing more damage than Torvald in the long run. And his nullify, it can be good, but it's actually not really that impactful in sumos, because the time to kill is just so long that the two second silence won't be enough time to kill somebody. The one redeeming quality about Torvald is his ultimate, and his ultimate is able to blast everybody off of the point. It basically forces the sentinel pick out, and also forces enemies to use their abilities that allow them to be crowd control immune, or otherwise just ignore knockbacks, such as their movement abilities. It's not impossible, to stop Torvald from blasting everyone off of the point because of all those abilities, so his ultimate isn't just an instant game-winning tool, but it still is very, very good. And so that's why I'm going to put him in high C tier above Makoa, but the rest of the downsides of Torvald, yeah, really prevent him from going any higher, in my opinion. And the last tank is Yagaroth, the weirdest tank in the game. And, well, we're going to have a very bloated S tier, because guess what? She is... The best tank in Sumo's. Yeah, Yagaroth is insane in Sumo's, so let me break it down. First of all, she has among the highest EHP out of any tank, because she simply has a big health pool, but also when she's stationary, she has a metric crap ton of DR that reduces the damage she takes, and also makes it ridiculously easy to heal her because she simply needs less health to be healed back up because she's taking less damage. On top of that, she has some of the best damage you can possibly have in Sumo's. She has high area damage that spawns pools on the ground that constantly damage enemies as long as they step in it. She is capable of easily and gracefully clearing out deployables from the field and constantly doing damage to pretty much everybody as long as they're decently grouped up. And yeah, this is really good, consistent damage output. And then also, she has the ability to, like Khan, instantly remove a tank from the field by just eating them, consuming them. You see Rom, press E, and then go, um, dum, 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 and they die. As long as you have good position and good timing on it, because uh, you can still end up being killed in your ultimate because your ultimate isn't allowed to be healed back, but as long as you do it with any semblance of strategy, with like a shield in front of you, or Terminus Power Siphon, or something like that, you'll get the kill, and that's just... An amazing ability to have in Sumo's. On top of that, she is immune to all knockbacks. So, you know that thing about Torvald's ult? Or Ash's knockbacks being really good in Sumo's? Well, if you have Yagaroth on the enemy team, all of a sudden they're not. They're useless. So, she is pretty much the hardest tank to kill in Sumo's. She has an execute ult, she has really good damage, and she's immune to most forms of crowd control. Yeah, th this is the best tank in Sumo's bar none, and yeah, if you pick her, there's a very good chance that you're going to win, so yeah, keep that in mind the next time you're in a Sumo's draft. Now we have our supports, starting with Mr. Corvus, who's going to give supports a bad name here because he's going into the C tier, and that's because 
Corvus has a niche use in sumos. He is not really a good tank healer. That's true in regular games as well as sumos. He simply doesn't really have that high of an actual healing output per second. It's just that he has all the extra utility that allows him to heal people like across the map, pocket flanks very well. But that isn't necessarily that useful in sumos. So yeah, he's not a great healer, but what he lacks in healing, he actually ends up making up for in damage. And that's because his ultimate will build ultimate charge off of itself. Basically, if you put his ultimate down on the objective, all the damage that the ultimate does will count towards building his ultimate back. And you basically enter a cycle where you put your ultimate on the field. It does a lot of percent based damage. And then a few seconds later, after your ultimate is over, you already have another ultimate. You can put it back down on the field. And Corvus is actually capable of dealing some of the highest damage numbers in the lobby that way. However, the damage output doesn't really make up for the lack of healing, in my opinion, so he's going to start off the support roster in C tier. Next, we have Furia, who is a ridiculous support to play against in Sumus, and that's because Solar Blessing is super super strong it's one of the highest healing output support abilities in the game uh pretty much only outmatched by grover's ultimate i'm pretty sure does what 1750 healing a second which is crazy and it's an area tool and it lingers if you leave the beam for what one and a half seconds so yeah it basically makes her tanks immortal uh, and she also has very good damage output, her ultimate can be very good, so she is a very, very solid support in sumos. The one weakness she has is that after the 20 minute mark, she's very susceptible to being dope because she doesn't have any defensive abilities apart from using the beam for herself, but unlike her tanks, she doesn't get the lingering effect, so she has to basically remain stationary under the beam, and that makes her vulnerable to being crowd controlled out of it by a knockback or Khan's ult or Makoa's ult or, some, or Makoa's hook or something like that. So that can be a very massive flaw, and actually, as you saw in my previous video, she ended up actually losing a match to Sky, if you can believe it. So I think she's pretty good, but I think I'm going to put her in A tier and not S tier because of that vulnerability that she has. Someone who is going into the S tier, however, is Grok. Grok is hands down one of the best supports that you can possibly play in sumos and that's because of totemic ward he is able to put down a bunch of totems on the objective doing massive amounts of area healing and also having uh, the movement speed buff applied to all of his tanks because that card is op i don't know why you wouldn't run it he also has very very good damage decent enough area damage in the form of his shock pulse although certainly not the greatest he does have a really good ult as well applying even more healing applying damage to the enemies slowing them applying a movement speed buff to his teammates and in late game when it's time to go and kill the supports grok has very good self-sustain because he gets to benefit from his own totems and unlike furia he doesn't have to just remain stationary in one spot and he has ghost walk where he can block all damage heal himself back up and become just immune to everything so that is really, really good. It makes him a lot beefier than a lot of other supports in late game. The only downside to Grok is that his totems can be destroyed by area damage. So someone like Yagaroth or Ash or even Fernando could, if they wanted, target his totems and make it a lot harder to heal. But with a little bit of Kronos and smart totem placement, you can mitigate this effect somewhat, and he's still one of the best supports you can possibly have in sumos. After that, we have Grover with Rampant Blooming, who is a very powerful area healer who is able to consistently heal everyone on his team for a big burst of healing every couple of seconds. Once again, he's also capable of putting out consistent damage. Normally, in the main game, he's S tier, but I'm not going to give him that S tier ranking because I find that his healing is a little bit less reliable than someone like Furia or Grok, but he does have the best survivability out of the three, because he can potentially run the DR card to make himself very tanky. He has really good self-healing because all of the healing he does is applied to himself, including his ultimate, which effectively makes him immortal in sumos, and he also has his vine, which is one of the best movement abilities in the support class, hands down. He can basically just teleport anywhere he wants, so Grover is still very good, but I don't quite think he's S-tier material. Io is a very powerful heal bot, but not exactly the heal bot you want for sumos, and that's because she mostly does single target healing. Luna is able to do AoE healing, but, well, she only does 300 healing a second. The main source of her healing comes from her moonlight, and she can only heal people one at a time. Even though it's good concentrated healing, it's simply not able to consistently keep everyone on the enemy team topped off, and eventually, if the enemies are smart, they're going to start picking apart your defense and 
Well, uh, making it very hard for you to actually keep everyone alive. On top of that, because she's constantly channeling the heal, she's not capable of doing that much damage, which is not what you want in sumos. You want as much damage as you can possibly have. And she doesn't really have the greatest survivability in sumos either, because once the 20 minute mark comes around, her only real method of self-defense is Luna and potentially the stun, but everyone has Unbound by that point, so the stun is useless, and she's very easy to just walk down. So she's not that good in sumos, and I'm going to put her in C tier above Corvus, though, because she is better than Corvus. But if you thought Io and Corvus were bad, you haven't seen Genos. <laughs> Genos might be the only character in D tier on this list, genuinely. I, I haven't decided where I'm going to put the others yet, but Genos is definitely in D tier. And that's because Genos has the worst healing output in the game. Just period. He is not capable of pushing out even remotely similar healing numbers to the other supports, and that's because he has very slow healing over time, and the burst he provides isn't even really that good compared to the burst of a lot of other supports in this game. So he is just... he's just bad in sumos. He's just bad. Like, on top of his poor healing output, he also... I mean, he has decent damage, I guess, but he is ridiculously easy to dive past the 20 minute mark because, hello, he doesn't have any defense. He's just not good. Period. So let's move on and let's go put our second support in S tier. That's going to be Lilith. And I think I might actually put her above Grok. And that's because her swarms make up for the one weakness that Grok has. They can't be destroyed, and so you can constantly put these giant circles on the objective that basically cover the whole objective that will do ridiculous amounts of healing. And they will also end up doing a lot of damage passively to the enemy tanks, meaning that she ends up having some of the highest damage numbers in sumos usually, uh, kind of alongside characters like Nyx and Fernando, because it's just passively doing damage, doing damage, doing damage. And then when the 20 minute mark comes around, she has very good self-sustain, she has the highest health pull out of any support, basically making her almost like the fifth tank, and she has very good mobility, and her ultimate is also exceptional for survivability, uh, because it m makes her regenerate even more blood health and have an even even stronger movement ability. So there's basically no weakness that Lilith has in sumos, and that's why she goes in S tier above Grok, because she's basically just the perfect sumo support. Maldamba is kind of like the off-brand version of Lilith and Grok, because he has his gourd, and that is pretty good, but <laughs> it's just not as good as what Lilith and Grok can provide. Uh, he is now able to do damage with his gourd ever so slightly, and that's pretty good. Rampant Gourd used to not be able to do damage, and that sucked. Uh, but it's just not as good as Lilith's Swarm, and his regular damage just isn't cutting it either. His crowd control can be okay for the first five minutes of the game, and then it's useless because Unbound exists, and his Slither is just a worse version of Grok's Ghost Walk for the purposes of Sumos. He's an okay support. He is definitely better than Io and Corvus, but he's not anything top tier, so I'm going to put him in B tier. Now we move on to Pip, and Pip is one of those characters who is so close to making it into S tier, but I just can't put him in S tier. And that's because he is ridiculously powerful, but he has just enough counterplay to make it so that he's not cut out for S tier. He has some of the best AoE healing output you can possibly have in the game. With Combat Medic, your teammates basically just don't die as long as you keep shooting them. You're able to constantly, every second, lob in a bomb that does close to a thousand healing, uh, sometimes even more than a thousand healing if the teammates buy Rejuvenate, and on top of that he also has his potion for another quick burst. And then his ultimate is capable of turning everyone into a chicken that only has 1500 health, and if your teammates are coordinated, that can potentially get a kill or two. But... Pip is also able to be countered by shields. If people put shields in his face, or any kind of barrier really, he won't be able to shoot projectiles to his teammates, and that significantly hampers his ability to heal, more so than basically every other support in the game who just ignores shields outright, like Furia, Grover, Lilith, Grok, etc. Uh, he can run Mega Potion to mitigate this issue, however Mega Potion is a lot harder to play, and it's a lot less consistent than Combat Medic. Although it does also give him better survivability in the late game, so personally I think Mega Potion is still better than Combat Medic in Sumos, but it's just a little bit riskier to play, and it's, yeah, it's still not as good as what Lilith or Grok can do. And then on top of that, 
Unbound will really, really counter his ultimate, and even if you have coordination, Unbound 3 makes it very hard to actually capitalize on it and get a kill. And all the support has to do is pop their powerful healing abilities, such as a Grover ult, to make it so that the chickens are incapable of dying. And on top of that, he is really easy to dive, because outside of his potion, he has no form of self-defense. He has no defensive ability like Slither, and he, well, he has his self-healing and his weightless, but weightless is pretty easy to deal with, so he's so close to S tier, and maybe if he had one fewer weakness, he would be an S tier, but because of all the weaknesses that he has, I do have to put him just at the top of A tier. Ray is weird, because she's not a heal bot, and so she's not exactly who you want for sumos. She is able to power up ultimate charge, which is good, but a lot of tanks already get really good ultimate charge in sumos, because everyone's grouped up together, and a lot of them do area damage, meaning that they are able to just build ultimate charge super, super quickly. And, uh, yeah, her damage reduction abilities can also be helpful in some cases, but also really aren't helpful in others. Like, her envelop is just not good versus Rom, Khan, Fernando, Yagaroth, uh, Ruckus, etc. So, it's just, yeah, she is not really cut out for sumos, there's not really any point in picking her in sumos. However, if you do run a spammy build with, you know, a lot of uptime on the heal, then she could potentially be an okay healer, and I think that saves her from going into D tier, especially because she does have a very good amount of survivability, thanks to the damage reduction versus some tanks, thanks to the movement speed, the self-healing, and her ultimate as well makes her immortal. Ceres is another character who is going to go in C tier, I think above these two, but right below Io. And Ceres is a heal bot, that's true, and that's good, and that saves her from being in D tier, but she's a pretty crappy heal bot for sumos. And that's because, even though she technically does have area healing, her area healing is much, much weaker than other characters. It's, in a, in a way, kind of similar to Io's area healing output, like, it's, <laughs> it's there, but it's just kind of, you know, low HPS. And because her heal is channeled, she struggles to deal damage consistently, and she's ending up only doing damage about 50% of the time. The one saving grace is that she has very good survivability, and that's because her Shadow Travel makes her immortal. If you play a Mortal Reach build, that can have almost permanent uptime. And when you're not in Shadow Travel, she is able to very quickly spam out a few orbs and then detonate them for a massive burst of self-healing, and that's not going to be cauterized because, duh, it's sumos. So that can be very good. Her crowd control, by the way, I forgot to mention it, it's... Okay, <laughs> her ultimate can be good for grouping up, although everyone's kind of grouped up every way, anyways. And uh, yeah, her stun just gets countered by Unbound, so definitely not the best crowd control in the support class either. We're down to the last two supports, one of whom isn't even a support, technically. And uh, yeah, <laughs> let's get the last true support out of the way, that is Ying. Ying is S tier in the real game, but she's another character who's going to fall from S tier, because she, yeah, has a few weaknesses in sumos that make her less savory than some of her other counterparts. Uh, for starters, she's not actually an area healer, technically. <laughs> she is able to heal multiple targets at the same time if her illusions target different people, but she's not an area healer to the same effect as someone like Grok or Pip. Uh, she is still able to do ridiculously good healing output, though, because at the end of the day, she's just Ying. <laughs> she's just that good, man. Uh, and her ultimate is also very good. It can block crowd control, and it also heals everyone on the team for 600 healing per second. So that is kind of the one area tool she has. And her damage, I guess, is pretty okay for a sumo. If you wanted to be weird, you could play Resonance and sacrifice your healing output for a lot of area damage. But even then, I don't think that's necessarily the right playstyle for her, because, yeah, well, <laughs> then she just kind of becomes similar to Corvus. A lot of damage, but not really the best healing. And uh, on top of that, she has no form of crowd control or other buffs she can give to the team. Her illusions are very easy to hit with collateral damage, such as bombs from Ash, Fernando Flame Lance, etc., and uh, she also, I would argue, is pretty easy to take down once you have her teleport ability out of the way. Very easy to just CC her and then kill her. So I think I'm going to actually end up putting her uh, in B tier and probably below Maldamba as well, because at least Maldamba has, I would argue, better area healing for sumos than Ying. She's still a viable enough option, but she's far from your number one choice in sumos. And finally, we have the flank sky. Oh my gosh. It's going to be embarrassing how many supports she's about to outperform. Are you ready? The official ranking for sky on this tier list <laughs> is low A tier. Oh my god, what? <laughs> 
Yeah, Sky is actually really good in sumos, and she's definitely an A-tier support. And the reason for that is she has powerful area healing, but she also has ridiculously good damage. With Smoke and Daggers, her Smoke Bomb is able to heal everyone in a massive radius. You pair that with Healing Vapors, and you have a healing tool that's on par with an ability like Maldamba's Gourd, Grok's Totems, Lilith Swarms. Yeah, it's not going to directly outheal them. Uh, Grok will definitely do more healing, Lilith will definitely do more healing, Maldamba can potentially do more healing. But... It's still a very competent healing tool. It makes her very competitively viable because it's able to constantly heal everybody on the team for a good amount. And if they buy Rejuvenate, it's over 100 healing per tick. It's actually very good. And she's able to maintain 100% uptime on it very consistently because she has two charges of the Smoke Bomb and she has a really good cooldown card. But what she really provides the team with is a nice movement speed buff in the form of Dissipate, kind of similar to Grox Totems, and a metric crap ton of damage. Because Poison Bolts are a percent-based damage tool that is able to do a lot of damage very quickly, especially when paired with her Wrist Crossbow. She has some of the best single-target bursts, just period, in sumos, because duh, she's a flank. <laughs> and on top of that, her ultimate, I've found, is incredible in sumos. It's crazy, because it's trash in the main game, everyone dodges it, but in sumos, everyone's grouped up, and it's able to pierce through a lot of the shields and barriers that would normally block many other forms of damage. And it also does a massive 3,000 bursts, so if you're able to capitalize on it by getting someone low, uh, it could just instantly delete them. Or you can pop the burst on them, and then finish off whoever's low before their support gets to them. So it's really, really good. And then, by the time late game comes around, she actually is very impressive in the survivability department because of that movement speed buff that she gets. She uh, combines Dissipate with her passive movement speed buff whenever she's in stealth to move around very quickly. She does a lot of damage, which is actually enough to ward off certain tanks. Like, a tank can die of her and then end up taking a bunch of damage and retreating because they don't want to die, because Sky is actually pretty scary. And she benefits from all the healing that she provides, so yeah, really good self-sustain as well. And if you build properly, she is actually very good in terms of survivability. So all around, a very well-rounded support in sumos, and yeah, easily A tier, which is, <laughs> which is crazy. This is a flank! What are we doing here? But yeah, that's gonna do it for this sumo tier list. So yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I'm looking at the recording time right now and I'm very concerned, but I'll probably end up chopping out a lot of it in the uh, editor because <laughs> it's a silly tier list. And I don't want to make it too long, but at the same time, it is kind of fun to nerd out and explain the differences between the Sumo's meta and the real meta, because as you can see, a lot of things are drastically different. Torvald's in C tier. Rom and Yagroth are in S tier. Sky is in A tier. What? <laughs> so, yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.